Hello, and welcome to the Destiny 2 class. We're going to take you through a few projects that will familiarize you with many of the new features, including new text editing, new stitch patterns, a shortcut to an existing feature, and of course, much, much more. Let's check out the new contemporary designs to start out. You'll find them in the Exclusives tab under the key marked Contemporary. Go ahead and browse through them, and when you're done, Click on the sun design, number 008, to select it. Then click on the set key in the preview menu to set it on the page. Click on the edit button to open the edit drop down menu. And you'll notice a few new keys there. This is the new stippling key. Click on it to open the stipple menu. Look, options. You can choose the size hoop you want by using the arrow keys located here. Notice that when you select a hoop that is too small for the design on the page, it will appear as gray behind the design. When you choose a hoop size that you can use, the stippling will be visible behind the design. Set this value to the 24 by 24 centimeter hoop. You can also decide how close you want the stippling to the design to be by using the distance setting. It defaults to zero, but you can actually set it to negative five. Even keeping the setting at zero may cause the stippling to sew over some of the thinner lines of your embroidery. But if you want it to be very close, set it to point one, and that should prevent that from happening. You can set it as far away as five millimeters and you can see it changing on the design page as you change the value here. For our purposes right now, set it to 0.1. The spacing value is the distance between the stippling lines. The value ranges from two millimeters to 50 millimeters. The default setting is five Let's set it to 10. For right now, you can preview your creation by touching the preview key. If you're not happy with the result, adjust the values. And touch preview again to see the result. Please remember that once you touch the OK key to set the stippling on the design page, you can't go back and change any of the values. You would need to delete the existing stippling and start over to make changes at that point. Let's set this back to point one. Click preview. Click OK. And the crowd goes wild. Isn't that fun? Next, we're going to go to IQ and look at the new shapes. So touch the home key if you're following along, click OK to get back to the home screen, and touch IQ Designer. Touch the shapes key. Across the top, you'll now see five different menu options. It will default to the original closed shapes menu, and you still have the outline only, fill only, and both outline and fill options for these shapes. The next menu contains the 30 new closed shapes. Next up is the menu of new open shapes. Pretty fancy, huh? The next menu is for saved outlines. We'll get to that in another lesson. The last menu allows you to select a hoop to place as the background on the IQ Designer workspace. While we're here, Go ahead and select the 24 by 24 centimeter hoop. That's nine and a half by nine and a half inches for those of you who prefer to use the English measurement. Okay, touch okay to set it on the page. You can now see a red outline of that hoop here on the page. Go back to the shapes menu. Click on the open shapes key and choose the swirly, twirly heart. 
then touch OK to set that on the design page. We need to resize this heart. It should already be selected on the design page with a red box around it since you just set it on the page. Touch the size key. In the size menu, use this key to resize the heart and maintain the height to width ratio. As you resize, you will be able to see the value changing here at the top of the menu. Size it down to about 66 millimeters for the top value. Doesn't have to be exact. See, I missed it. That'll do. Touch OK to return to the main design page. Next, touch the duplicate key here to bring a second heart onto the page. Left click, hold down your left mouse button as you drag the heart out of the way. Make sure that it's a little bit of a distance away from the other heart. That'll make it easier to select later when we need to delete it when we're done with it. Touch the next key located here at the bottom right hand corner of the screen. We have a new preference settings menu. In the past, both objects on the page would have had to have had the same line properties, the same stitch width, etc. Now we can set them individually. Here at the bottom left hand corner of the screen is your stitch width key for the zigzag. When you touch it, a menu opens and you can adjust the zigzag width on just the element that's selected here on your screen. Let's increase that to 4.5 and touch set to close the menu. You also have a density setting here. If you touch that key, the density menu opens up and you can decrease the density by 10% or you can increase the density by 10%. We're going to keep it at the default of 100% for right now. Touch set to close the menu. If you want to change the aspect of the second element on the page, you can use one of the two select keys and it will toggle through all of the designed elements on the page. With the second heart selected, go down here to the width key Touch that, and let's decrease the width of that zigzag to one millimeter. Then touch set to close the menu. Touch the preview button, and you'll get a message that the IQ Designer data will not be saved and asks if it's OK to continue. Touch OK, because we can go back later and adjust this if we need to. Look at that. Each of the hearts has a different width setting. Isn't that awesome? Touch the return key to return to the preference settings menu and touch the return key again to go back to the main IQ Designer design page. Make sure that your select key here is activated. Left click somewhere outside of the area of the heart Hold down the left mouse button and drag that red box around the heart and then touch the scissors key to delete it. Our select key is still activated here, so click somewhere outside the area of the heart, left click and hold down the left mouse button as you drag that red box around the heart to select it on the design page. Go to the Line Properties menu. Open it by touching this key. Look. How about this? Two new line options, candle wicking and chain stitch. Choose the candle wicking option by clicking on it. It's a good idea to choose a different color than black, which is the default because it makes it easier for you to see when changes have been applied to your outline. We're going to choose a fuchsia. Touch OK to exit the menu. Choose the beaker in the line properties menu. And now touch the outline of the heart. 
The heart should change to whatever color you choose in the Properties menu. Touch the Next key on the Design page. Here we have the stitch properties for the candle wicking stitch. These are the values that you can adjust. You can use this key here under the preview pane if you want to zoom in. The line will just be kind of shimmering at this point to show that it is selected. You'll be able to see a preview of the stitches in the next menu though. The first key here at the bottom left will open the sizing options for the candle wicking stitch. The value can go as low as 3 millimeters and as large as 10 millimeters. Set it to 3 for right now. Touch set to make the change. The second key allows us to adjust the spacing between the stitches. You can make them as close as 0.0, .0 which they would be touching or overlapping depending on the size of each stitch, or as far apart as 10 millimeters. Please set it to 3 millimeters for right now. Then touch set to make the change. Are you anxious to see what it looks like? Of course you are. Touch the preview key at the bottom of the page. When you do that, a menu will pop up on the screen with a warning that says the IQ Designer data will not be saved. OK to continue? You can choose to save it at this point, but you can still go back if you don't like the preview, so it's not crucial for you to do it at this point. Touch OK to go to the preview. Isn't that pretty? If you want to see it a little bigger, click on the key here to magnify it on the page. And then touch the magnifier to see a realistic preview of your design. Touch OK to exit that menu. If you don't like your design at this point, you can still go back and adjust it by touching the return icon located at the bottom of the page. It's a good idea to save it so that if you do need to make any changes after you've sewn it out, you won't have to start over. So touch the Save key here to save it into the machine memory. Touch the Set key to set the design on the design page. When you do that, you will get another message that will pop up on the screen that says, Converted to the embroidery pattern and IQ Designer will be exited. OK to continue to Embroidery Edit screen? Touch OK because it is OK to go to Embroidery Edit. Touch the Add key on the screen to go to the main embroidery menu. Touch the Fonts tab here and choose a font, any font at all. Then touch the Size key here to change it to medium size. Now go to your lowercase and type in A, B, Y. Go to the capitals and choose L, O, C, K. Touch the Enter key to go to the next line. Type in F, O, R, space, T, H, E. Hit return, go to the capitals, and type in L O U E. Yes, please spell it incorrectly. Guess what? We can fix spelling errors without having to delete all the way back to the error now. The two arrows here will allow you to move a cursor through the text to find the area you want to correct. Touch the arrow key once to move it to the U in love. Move the cursor until it is over the letter you want to change. You have to hit the delete button first to delete what you don't want. And then type in the letter that you do want. And there's the V. If you need to insert a space, move the cursor to the letter before the spot where you want the space. like this. So we moved it to the Y and now we insert the space and it will appear to the right of the selected letter. That looks pretty good, but wait, there's more. We have new alignment keys right here. 
Touch the alignment key and you will be able to see the changes in the preview window. It defaults to center alignment, but you also have right and left justification now. Choose the one you like best. Make sure everything is exactly the way you want it to be because you will not be able to make the spacing or spelling changes once the text is set on the design page without recreating the entire line. Touch set to set the text on the design page. It's going to be on top of the heart, but we can move it right now without changing the alignment. Text used to be set as individual lines, but now multiple line text will be automatically set as a block of text so that you can move it without messing up the alignment. Move both the text and the heart until you're happy with how they're set up. Touch the text to select it. With the text selected, open the Edit menu. Since a few keys needed to be added for the new features, you will need to touch the little gray arrow key located at the bottom of the menu to get to the font editing options. Oh no! The font options that we all know and love are grayed out. Really, it's okay. We need to ungroup the text before we can edit each individual line. Click on the gray arrow that is now pointing upward to scroll back to the other editing options. Click on the group ungroup key here. And notice that the lines of the text now each have their own box around them instead of one box surrounding all of the text. If you try to move one individually though, Oh, you can't. It's okay. You need to touch an empty spot on the design page first. That will deselect all but one line of text. It is important to note that this is true with any objects that are grouped. When you ungroup them, each design element will have its own box around it. But before you move anything individually, you have to touch a place on the design page that has nothing on it. Then you can adjust them individually. Touch the line that says Baby Lock if it isn't already selected by touching the text. In the Edit menu, scroll back down to access the font options. Touch the font type key and change the font to font 05. Really, you can change it to any font you want. Be happy, we don't care. Click OK to exit the font menu. Guess what? We're going to group everything now. You probably already noticed there is a new key here at the bottom of the screen. Touch that key to open the grouping menu. Just a note, even though it looks like Baby Lock is selected on the design page, it is not selected for grouping. There are two ways to select a design element for grouping. The first method is to simply touch the design element on the screen. A pink box will appear around the design when it is selected. If you touch it again, it will deselect it. Sometimes design elements may overlap or be too close to each other for you to be able to touch it on the screen. The select keys located here will toggle through all of the design elements. When it gets to the one you want to select, you have to touch the set key directly below to select it or it will just go to the next design element. You can use both keys here to select the design elements. You can select just some of the design on the page and leave others out. It's completely up to you. For right now, deselect this design element and select this one. Touch OK to go to the design page. If you try to move the designs now, these two will be grouped on the page. Notice that each of them has its own red box around it. Now, if at this point you click off anywhere else on the design page, these two designs become ungrouped. So now you can still move them individually on the page. So why do they come ungrouped? Well, if you group them in this menu, they only stay grouped until you release them, like we just did there. Let's go back and let's regroup the two items and touch OK. 
If you want the two items to remain grouped for longer than just one move, use this key here. And notice when you touch that key, now there is a red box around both of the design elements. So it encompasses both elements. And now if you click anywhere inside that red box or touch anywhere inside that red box, you can drag those two elements. And even if you click off of them and select something else and click back on, they will remain grouped. What if you want to ungroup these two items again? You can do that. You can go here and this will ungroup the items. They each have their own separate red box around them. But to get them to move independently, you still need to touch elsewhere on the page. And now they're no longer grouped. Go back to our grouping menu. You have two more keys here. This key will select all of the design elements on the page at one time. And this key will deselect everything on the page at one time. So if you know you want to group everything, just touch this icon and touch OK. Go ahead and touch the group button here to group everything together for the next part of the exercise. Touch the stippling key here to go into the stippling menu. Again, choose the 24 by 24 centimeter hoop. Change the distance to 1.1. Notice you can see some of the areas changing here on the page. And change the spacing to 10. Remember, once you exit the screen with the stippling settings, you can't go back and change anything. You would have to delete the stippling and start over. Let's preview this. This looks great! Click OK, and your creation is now ready to be embroidered.